Hi, my name is Tara Carr. I'm an associate professor at the University of Arizona and director of the allergy program. In this video, we will discuss approved medications for treatment of severe eosinophilic asthma. Asthma is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airways in which airways are hyperresponsive and patients get recurrent episodes of symptoms. Uncontrolled asthma, as defined by the International European Respiratory Society and American Thoracic Society Severe Asthma Guidelines, is poor symptom control, so having uncontrolled day-to-day -day symptoms, or frequent exacerbations, defined as two or more needs for systemic steroids in the previous year, serious exacerbations, meaning needing hospitalization, ICU stay, or mechanical ventilation in the previous year, and presence of ongoing airflow limitation, meaning lower lung function, persistent on spirometry or other breathing tests. There are many factors that can contribute to uncontrolled asthma, including environmental factors, disease factors, patient-related factors, and comorbidities. Severe asthma is asthma which remains uncontrolled despite treatment with high-dose inhaled steroids and another controller agent for asthma. For patients with severe asthma, they require this therapy to maintain control or they are still uncontrolled despite this high-dose therapy. The GINA guidelines, the Global Initiative for Asthma Guidelines, provide a framework for evaluating patients with severe asthma, which includes assessing patients' comorbidities and compliance with medications. But if a patient has severe asthma, then there are recommendations made for initiating therapies, including biologic therapies and other non-biologic therapies. Most of the biologic therapies available right now target type 2 asthma. Type 2 asthma is asthma where there are expression of type 2 helper and innate cell molecules and associated pathways in asthma. For patients who have type 2 asthma, often we see high expression of type 2 cell cytokines like IL-4, IL-5, and IL-13 in the airways or in the blood. We see blood or tissue eosinophilia, and these patients tend to be responsive to steroids and responsive to medicines which block type 2 inflammation. These patients generally have other markers of allergy, including allergic rhinitis or eczema. Non-type 2 asthma are patients who don't have any of these type 2 characteristics. We can recognize these patients clinically by their comorbidities, including the presence of allergy or absence of allergy but additional markers can be helpful to determine whether patients have type 2 or non-type 2 asthma. Biomarkers that are commonly used include total IgE, specific IgE, blood eosinophils, sputum eosinophils, and exhaled nitric oxide. There are four categories of biologic agents which are FDA approved for treatment of severe asthma. This includes anti-IgE drugs, drugs that block the interleukin-5 molecule or IL-5 receptor, and a drug that blocks the IL-4 receptor alpha chain, which inhibits both IL-4 and IL-13 signaling. There are another group of drugs under development in late phases, which may soon be indicated for treatment of type 2 asthma, which include medications that block chemical TSLP, which is thymic stromolymphopoietin, and CRTH2, which is the receptor for prostaglandin.